Coming up on Broncos Country Connected. With nine picks in the upcoming draft, learn more about George Payton's philosophies and what he's looking for in the newest members of the Denver Broncos. Then the Denver 7 crew will discuss the quarterback landscape in the NFL. And finally, meet the man committed to keeping you connected at Empower Field at Mile High. Broncos Country Connected is next. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Broncos Country Connected. Free agency is finally upon us as Monday marked the first of a two-day negotiating period for teams and agents before the start of the new league year beginning tomorrow at 2 o'clock local time. The new league year is also when trades can become official, including the Broncos' potentially historic swap with the Seattle Seahawks for quarterback Russell Wilson after agreeing to terms last week. According to NFL Network's Tom Pelissero, if the deal is approved by the league, the Broncos will receive the perennial Pro Bowl quarterback and a fourth round pick in the upcoming draft in exchange for quarterback Drew Locke, tight end Noah Fant, defensive tackle Shelby Harris, and five draft picks, including a first and second round pick next month. But that doesn't make the upcoming draft insignificant for the Broncos. General Manager George Payton's philosophy has always been to draft and develop players. Last year, the Broncos had 10 picks and were recognized by NFL scouts and administrators with the best draft award. Of course, first-rounder Pat Sertan II played a big role last year, starting 15 games, recording 58 tackles and four interceptions. But the Broncos also found big-time contributors on days two and three. From running back Javante Williams in the second round to linebacker Baron Browning 105th overall, who went on to start nine games and record 58 tackles, the Broncos landed six players who started at least two games. George Payton and this Broncos staff recently got a closer look at some of the potential draftees at the 2022 NFL Scouting Combine. Here's a look back at Payton's first business trip with head coach Nathaniel Hackett and his talented group of scouts and the prospects they observed while in Indianapolis. Obviously, it's been a busy uh, month and a half or so, you know, in Denver, uh, the season. Our, our last game was the 8th. And then, uh, you know, we, we hired a new coach, Nathaniel Hackett, on the 28th of January. And, and from then, it's hiring a lot of coaches and, and just trying to get through our personnel process as well. You know, so we've got a lot done in a short time. But it's good to be here in Indy, you know, get a good look at these players uh, in person. I believe live for the very first time in a one-on-one -on -one situation as the new head coach of the Denver Broncos, Nathaniel Hackett, how are you? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. How about yourself? I'm doing well. What's it like to finally be here as a head coach? Oh, it's unbelievable. I didn't even know this thing existed. I was telling up there. I mean, all of a sudden, you kind of always walk by this room. I thought the bench press was in here at one the point. The bench press was over there. So. Okay, so I knew it was in this region right here. but Wait, had you're no not going to bench, are you? I will. I'll go up there. I'll compete. The starting point is just kind of a surge of energy in the building. I think that's kind of when they gave me the, the keys to come in. I tried to ask them if they knew what they just brought in. Um, so I think that's the starting point. You want those guys to be excited to come in the building and learn and, and, and then build those relationships. And I think as you create that and those bonds to, of all the guys being together with the coaches and how we feel and, and how we are with them is so important. And that's just going to, I think, improve the play out the gate. We're always going to be aggressive. We're going to be disciplined. We're always willing to move up. We're willing to move back. So we always want more picks, obviously. And the reason I say that is, one, you have more darts, and you have a, you know, a big, better chance to, to hit the bullseye. But it also gives you a lot of flexibility on draft day. You kind of saw what we did last draft. We moved up in the second and uh, to get Javante. And then we're in the third round. I think we moved back twice in the third round to get those picks back for Javante. And we are still able to get the players you know, we coveted you know, Minerds, Browning, those types. So I just think the more picks you have draft day, gives you a lot of flexibility to do whatever you want. The combine, I mean, it's just another step in the process. A ton of information is gathered there, you know, and it's not just what you see on TV. Obviously, we're all getting the times yeah. and we're getting to see these players work out, which is great. You know, we get to see these guys in person, see them move back to back to back. Troy Anderson from Montana State, a Bobcat. Was a quarterback, then a running back, then an outside linebacker, then an inside linebacker. And uh, he is fun to watch. He just pulverizes blockers. Some of these 
college linebackers don't take on, he does. We're also gathering a ton of information behind the scene, whether it's in the formal interviews with George and Coach Hack and the position coaches, the informal interviews where the coaches are kind of sitting one-on-one, -on -one, a little more relaxed environment so they get to know the players. And then we have guys working behind the scene that are constantly collecting information as well, whether how these guys, like I said, interact, how they take coaching, how they treat the people. And it's just another step in the process for us to gather a ton of information, continue to build these profiles on these guys so we really feel good about each individual player in April coming up to the draft. So when we, if we take one of these guys, we know what we're getting. In the offensive line, we have some pieces there. Obviously, we need to get a right tackle. And then defensively, um, you know, we need, to get, we need to get more pressure on the quarterback. That's what it's all about. And uh, we plan on doing that. And, and just more depth on defense. There's some strong edge players. Um, pass rushers, which everyone needs. Logan Hall, he can really, really bull rush. He can drop his pads for somebody so tall. That's another sub five unofficial. I think there's str some strong tackles, offensive linemen. Darian Kennard, he's lost 20 pounds since the end of the season. Played right tackle. A lot of teams think he's going to slide inside to guard. Bernard Ryman, Central Michigan. He's a really good athlete, too. And there's some corners, you know, we like. I spoke to a defensive coordinator this week, and he said, you bring McDuffie into your room, he could actually coach your secondary, too. He only had visits with 23 teams uh, this week, <laughs> Peter. It's a good class. There's a good group of outside backers, inside backers. Really, there's kind of talent everywhere, and I think it's going to be really good in those mid-rounds, second to fourth, fourth round, fifth round. There's going to be a lot of good value there, so I'm excited about that. You know, another thing, going back to the Combine, it's a chance for all of us to kind of meet up again. You know, we don't see all these road scouts all the time. But we've had a lot of conversations in the last week about this draft. We think there's good value, and we got a lot of picks, which will be good, because I think we can continue to add to this roster with young talent. I like the draft. I know people are kind of knocking it, but I think, uh, I think it's a good draft, you know, from top to bottom. With needs at edge rusher, right tackle, and inside linebacker, Denver can still find immediate contributors, especially with three picks in the second and third rounds. Here's a look at the Broncos' 2022 draft order as it stands right now. Be sure to tune in to all three days of draft coverage on the NFL Network starting Thursday, April 28th at 6 p.m. locally, with day two coverage starting at 5 p.m. and day three getting underway at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Still to come on Broncos Country Connected, the Denver 7 crew will discuss some of the biggest headlines from around the league and how they might impact the Broncos this season. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. The quarterback position is arguably the most important position in all of sports. So it should come as no surprise that signal callers have been dominating NFL headlines this offseason. From Russell Wilson's new Twitter avatar to Aaron Rodgers returning to Green Bay, Tom Brady coming out of retirement to rejoin the Bucks, and Kirk Cousins' extension with the Vikings, it is safe to say quarterbacks make this league go round. With more on what these moves mean for the Broncos, let's check in with Nick Rothschild, Troy Rank, and Ryan Harris. Thank you very much, and welcome to our Denver 7 segment, brought to you by 1-800-GOT-JUNK. No junk in this studio, though. <laughs> Just a couple of goats, Ryan Harris, Troy Rank. No Lionel Bienvenue this week. You get me, the understudy, Nick Rothschild. And with the amount of money being thrown around in the NFL these days, guys, I, maybe I should ask for a raise. A little extra work, a <laughs> little extra cash. I don't know. We'll talk free agency in a minute, but first... We're a week removed from the Broncos acquiring Russell Wilson. Ryan, the excitement sure hasn't gone down around these parts. Now that you've had time to sort of digest the trade, have you found yourself moving more towards rational analysis or are we still in hype train mode? Full speed ahead on the hype train mode. Now you start to get excited if you're a Denver Broncos fan. You start looking at it. Troy Rank was out at the Super Bowl site in Arizona to check things out. But there's a fever that's happening here in Broncos country. It's the excitement of having a dynamic quarterback. And one of the things that that means is you're going to get more production from key players all around, and you're going to be able to compete in each and every game in your division, in the AFC, and all year long. So stay excited. This is your job as a fan. You can't play on the field. You can't make any decisions of free agency. Have fun believing and believe first before all your other friends because I'm believing with you that the Broncos are going to the Super Bowl. Why not? Come on, let's go, boys. It's true. He really <laughs> did go down to Glendale to check out the spot for the Super Bowl last weekend and do some reporting. Troy, 
do we need to pump the brakes at all on this at least or like see if it works out in year one or are we just are we just talking Super Bowl? Well, listen, I do think you can tap the brakes. I was at the side of the Super Bowl having some fun with it. The reality is they are going to be back in the playoffs. That would be a huge disappointment if they miss the postseason. But the Super Bowl, as Ryan knows, you need to catch some breaks. Depends on who the matchups. There's a lot of things that have to go right. And, oh, yeah, there's like 80 great quarterbacks in the AFC right now. So it's not that easy. But with Russell Wilson, you wake up every day, Nick, and you got a chance. Your guy can match up against their guy. And that wasn't the case around here since Peyton Manning retired. And remember, when you just look at the numbers, Russell had 70 more, 71 more touchdowns than the Broncos' 11 starters and backups over these last six years. He gives you a chance every Sunday. So, yes, be optimistic. Hope, welcome back. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> 80 good quarterbacks in the AFC and one great quarterback returned to the NFC this weekend. He was the news of the weekend again. My personal nemesis, Tom Brady is back. <laughs> Just when we thought we'd rid ourselves of this warlock, he comes traipsing back into our lives. Ryan, thoughts? Was this his plan all along? I don't think it was his plan all along, but just reading the tea leaves, one of the things that I believe people miss about Tom Brady, he's the most competitive athlete arguably we've ever seen. And to me, something really bothered him about losing to the Rams who went on to win the Super Bowl. That's not something that happens much in Tom Brady's career. I think it just didn't leave him, that nagging feeling of, I got to get back and I got to go command the NFC. That's why I believe he's back. And this is kind of that time in the offseason where you would have started working out and perhaps he just wanted to still be there. If you have a passion, you have to exhaust it. And that's what Tom Brady's doing. I'm all here for it. I will never believe him again if he says he's retiring, but I'm here for it, guys. <laughs> yeah, he's in Brett Favre stats now. Uh, Troy, your son must be happy, right? He's a big Brady guy. I can start betting the Bucks again. Uh, the rest of Broncos country, maybe not. TB12 doesn't really impact the Broncos. They're not. The Bucks aren't on the schedule this year, but... Were you surprised like I was to see him change his mind? To see him change his mind, yes, but you could tell he was wavering. In every interview after he announced his retirement, he would not close the door, whether it was on a podcast, an interview, anything he put on social media, he kept the door ajar. And then you saw that basically conversation he had with Ronaldo when he was like, you're done, right? And it's like, well, and I was like, okay, he's coming back. Like you could tell from the grimace on his face. And basically I've covered many professional athletes and everyone that says I want to spend more time with my family, then they get to a point where they want to miss their family again. They miss the rhythm of the locker room and the camaraderie of the locker room. The final point on this, Nick, He's playing the best he's played in his career. Most guys like Manning and Elway that I, call, that I recovered and their retirements, they couldn't do it anymore physically. But that was the problem with Brady. What was keeping him from doing it again? Nothing. Yeah, well, something should because I don't like him. Anyway, uh, back <laughs> to the Broncos. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. They've invested a lot in their wide receivers, guys. Last year, uh, they invested nearly $53 million guaranteed dollars in Tim Patrick and Cortland Sutton alone. Jerry Judy, he's a first-round pick who also didn't have touchdown catch last year. Uh, Ryan, which of these guys stands to benefit the most from Russell Wilson's uh, coming to Denver? I believe it's Tim Patrick, and Tim Patrick kind of fits that mold of a receiver who knows how to get open, can be trustworthy in third down situations, and that's really where elite quarterbacks go. It's not about your 40 time once you're playing in the NFL, and I think Tim Patrick's been one of the most underrated receivers in the entire NFL the last two years. Also, Jerry Judy could benefit the most, but Jerry's got to work on catching the ball with his hands this offseason. You get a, a, a fire thrower like Russell Wilson, you start catching the ball on your body, it ricochets out, creates interceptions. So I would say Tim Patrick first, then Jerry Judy, but guys, don't forget about Albert Okwebunam, Okwebunam, Okwebunam. I think he's going to be a great, great talent for the Broncos with Russell Wilson. Get him on your fantasy football team. Good advice from Ryan Harris there. Uh, Troy, I don't think anyone questions Jerry Judy's talent, but his production through his first two years in the league hasn't been good enough. Is this a situation where he, more than anyone else on that offense, needs to find a way to connect with Russell Wilson or – Dare I say he may be heading towards an exit in Denver. Yeah, no more excuses now. You've got an elite quarterback, and I've remained bullish on Judy. I've said he's better in space than NASA. He can get open quickly. He is a difference maker, but you got to get him the ball. Number one, never use him on a fake jet sweep from a high school <laughs> sophomore <laughs> please. scheme again, please, because it demoralized him in all seriousness, and it led to lack of consistency. But with Russell Wilson, as Ryan said, he's got to establish camaraderie early. He's got to get in his timing early like you would with Peyton Manning 
game back in the day because no excuses for this receiving group. I've defended them. Now you have an elite quarterback. You've got to produce. We can't keep talking about it. And in year three, it's time for Jerry Judy. I'll say this, Nick. There's no way he's going to finish another season where he had three red zone targets in the red zone as he did last year. Offensive tackle, edge rusher, and linebacker. Those are probably the three main needs, the areas that Bronco, the Broncos need to upgrade during the offseason. They can do that either through free agency or the draft. Troy, which route do you think the Broncos should go to fill those needs? Well, when we look back here in a couple of weeks, Nick, I want to know that the Broncos have filled a guy and answered a need at edge rusher, a veteran edge rusher that will help pair with Bradley Chubb. It's a huge season for Bradley Chubb to reach his potential. So I want to look back and say, yes, they got a veteran pass rusher that fits with Bradley Chubb. They also need a defensive lineman after trading away Shelby Harris, and they're going to need another cornerback. You can never and Ryan knows this, have enough edge rushers and cornerbacks. So those are the ones I would address in free agency. Thanks, guys. Coming up on the other side of the break, meet the man that is committed to keeping you connected while at Empower Field at Mile High. Don't go anywhere. Broncos Country Connected is presented by Carpet Mill Outlets. Bigger discounts, better selections. Welcome back to this final segment of Broncos Country Connected presented by Ford. Technology plays a massive part in the game day experience at Empower Field at Mile High. With digital tickets, self-checkout concession stands, and strong Wi-Fi to keep you connected, there are countless tech components in place to ensure Broncos fans don't have to miss a minute of the action. Russ Trainer, the Senior Vice President of Information Technology, is tasked with making sure all of those components work properly in order to give Broncos country one of the best fan experiences in the league before you even get inside the stadium. Let me get Tahoe or Denise to run up there and help you. Stand by. My name is Russ Trainer. I'm the Senior VP of IT here at the Denver Broncos. I've been with the organization since 2008. For game day, IT wants to be kind of invisible. When we're invisible, that means everything's working. And I get here about eight o'clock in the morning. We stop in ticketing, make sure they're okay. We'll make sure our point of sale for all the concession stands are okay because they're all networked up. And we do have some cashless POS stations where you go up and you get drinks. You do the mobile ordering. They gotta make sure transactions go through. I walk the clubs, make sure all the TVs are on. I make sure all the menu boards are good. I'll do a walk around everywhere, make sure all that's good. Is it working better now? And I actually, like, over the last couple of years, COVID for me brought me out from the IT umbrella and I'm more fan facing. And I'm out there interacting with the fans, making sure they're okay, making sure their tickets pull up okay. But before that, we got to make sure our cellular systems are working, our DAS systems going, making sure the Wi-Fi is good. And I'll do Wi-Fi tests quickly on my phone. Sometimes I'll go out to the parking lot a little bit and I'll just ask folks, hey, how's the Wi-Fi working for you out here, right? It's really checkpoints. Like I just check in with people as they start firing up their systems. Walking between sidelines, everything working? Yep. All right, solid. Rock, rock solid. Rock solid. <laughs> as the morning goes along, is I do check in with football, make sure they're good. And then getting everybody settled in, make sure their computers are connected. You, can you check in with Melissa? She's having a hard time logging in one of the um, computers up there in command. The stop in with the video team upstairs. The creative services team is the team that runs the scoreboard. They run all the TV stuff inside, all the suites everywhere. They run the audio, which I think they have the biggest connection back to our core. I think we do 80 gig back to the core. And then making sure the headsets are working for the coaches, the Microsoft tablets on the sideline, make sure all that works, right? The Wi-Fi on the sideline, make sure that works. Make sure the connectivity back to the NFL works. So there's a lot of things that are in play on game day that the normal fans don't think about, but they're there to help that, that whole experience. Back in 2009, 2010, we put our, put our first wireless, full stadium wireless. And we were so happy when we hit a terabyte of data. Like that was like, oh my goodness, we hit a terabyte. Now 10 terabytes is our average. Really my goal is to get as soon as you get off on I-25, you're on my network. You know, ticket's gonna pull up good, your Broncos Plus is gonna work good, everything's, you're gonna get your discounts, that kind of thing, the experiences are gonna be good, and the rich media content works well. From a stadium perspective on game day, we're working with a company called Wait Time, but we did a proof of concept this year with them at three gates, and we're trying to measure wait times. We're gonna look at that and see if it can be applied to other areas around, like the club level. Wait times for bathrooms, wait times for concession stands, we'll see if it, if it works well. 
So our BIA team, headed by Clark Ray, BIA stands for Business Intelligence and Analytics. So we have a video wall in his area now from a data analytics perspective. As soon as Nick comes in and he scans his ticket, we then darken it like there's a giant seat map. And you can see, wow, why is section 301? They don't have a whole lot of people. Like, what's the deal with that? We know what, how, many, how many cars are in the parking lots kind of thing. So you get that operational perspective, that view. And then even the, on the concession side, he can see like, okay, we're selling so many Cokes or whatever, that kind of thing. You want to do the right thing by the fan, but you want to back it up with the right data. So you're making the most impact with your dollars and most impact with your resources and customer service and that kind of stuff too. There's so many things connected nowadays, but really from the fan perspective, making their experience here at the, at the venue as they arrive on, on site, making that um, a world-class kind of customer service thing, right? That's probably the biggest impact that I could, you know, is when I can enable fan engagement and fan excitement and experiences, make all that stuff better, right? And keep them, keep them excited when they come to the game. Well, that'll do it for Broncos Country Connected, but be sure to stay connected with us by following along at Broncos TV on Instagram and Twitter, and by checking out the Broncos YouTube channel for the latest free agency news and so much more. Thanks for watching. Broncos Country Connected is brought to you by Ford Trucks. Built better, built stronger, built Ford tough.